Today I'm going to share with you how you can set up your Wacom tablet for the best retouching experience. The main goal is always to customize the tablet in a way which makes the retouching process faster, efficient and more comfortable for your hand. So in the process, we will also change some keyboard shortcuts to make your keyboard coordinate much better with your tablet. And if you're new to tablets, do stay tuned till the end because in the end, we're going to cover a very important trick that you should not miss under any situation. This trick is so important that it has saved my sanity more than a dozen times. Very important. Don't skip it. So without any further ado, let's get started. Before we begin, make sure that you've installed the latest drivers for your Wacom tablet, which can be found right here. Just a side note, if you're using Windows 10, you might want to turn off Windows Ink and make a slight change in Photoshop settings to avoid running into errors. You can watch the video right here on how to do that. Now that we have the technical stuff out of the way, let's start with a very important tip. First of all, I prefer using my Wacom tablets wired all the time. And I would suggest the same, especially if you're using a desktop or if you're not moving, you're in the same table, keep it wired. Even though this has Bluetooth, keeping it wired serves two purposes. Number one, you won't ever have to charge it. And this is big for me because I'm too lazy to charge all of my electronic gadgets. You know, the lesser the gadgets we have that we have to charge, the better, right? And guess what? The Wacom pens use some crazy magnetic technology. It doesn't need any batteries, which is amazing, unlike the Apple pens do. Number two, there is lesser lag when it's wired as compared to Bluetooth connectivity. It's like wireless Bluetooth headphones. You might not be able to notice it, but there's a tiny bit of lag between the audio that you hear and the video that you see on your phone because of Bluetooth connectivity. And when you use the wire to connect it with your phone, there's much lesser lag noticeable sometimes, sometimes not noticeable, depending upon the technology. So when do you use wireless? When you're moving, traveling, it's much more convenient that way. Now that we have the tablet set and ready to go, let's start with customizing the pen. And to customize your tablet, open up the Wacom tablet properties. On a Windows PC, just search Wacom tablet properties and that's how you open that up. If you're using a Mac, you might have to do this. So here I am on a Mac and all you have to do is to go to your system preferences, all right? So click on the system preferences and at the bottom, after you install the drivers, you will have the Wacom tablet. Just open that up and this is the Wacom tablet properties. To set up the pen, first of all, make sure that your device is selected. In my case, only one device is connected to my computer, Windows PC, and the other Wacom tablet is connected to my Mac. So right now, we are on the Windows, so it's showing just one, because one is connected, makes sense. And we have two pens here, so I have two pens right here. I can use either one of these. So I'm going to select the one that I'm using right now, which is the Pro Pen 2. And here it gets interesting, the application right here. Always make sure that you change your shortcuts application wise. You cannot have the Photoshop shortcuts in your regular desktop while you're browsing on Google Chrome. You would want different shortcuts for that. You would want different shortcuts for Illustrator or Premiere. So make sure your application is added here and you change the shortcut only for that application. And to make sure that happens, make sure you select that application. If you cannot find your application here, let me show you how to add that. If I delete Photoshop from here. You can simply click on the plus right here and add your application. So I'm just going to scroll down and add Photoshop here. There you go. And just hit OK. You can also browse and find your application. Just add your application, select that, and only then you change the shortcuts. For the bottom key on my Wacom Pro Pen 2, this one, I'm going to use a specific modifier and it's special. So click on this drop down menu and then go to keyboard and then select modifier. If you're on a Windows, it should be left alt and then clicks right. What does that do? Well, let me show you what that does. Hit OK. If I open up Photoshop, have a look at this. If I select the brush and then if I hold the bottom key that we just modified and even if I hover over the tablet, just press the button and drag it to the right to make the brush larger, drag it to the left to make the brush smaller, drag it up to make the brush softer and drag it down to make the brush harder. You don't even have to press it 
just hover over it. Make it larger, smaller, softer, and then harder. So if you take it up, soft, take it down, hard. On a Mac, on the other hand, there's a little bit of difference. Let me show that to you. So here we are back on our Mac, nice rhyme. And then all you need to do is to set this to modifier. But first, let's select Photoshop CC 2019 or whatever version you add here. From here, let's go to keyboard and modifier. Here, we will select control, option, and the middle. Because I tried with the left and right, it works best with the middle. Select the middle, control and option, and then hit OK. Now when you open up Photoshop on a Mac, it is a little different. If you press and hold this button right there, the bottom one, and if you hover and drag, nothing happens. You will have to click and drag on a Mac. On a Windows, you just hover and drag. On Mac, you have to click just click on the tablet and drag. Then it does the exact same thing. Time for us to set the top button right here. And that we will set to right click because that is something we use time and again. So simply set that to clicks and then right click. This is very useful all the time. Maybe you wanna right click on the layer and select convert to smart object or something. Maybe you wanna right click here or something, select the brush. Maybe you wanna right click outside and change the canvas background to light gray. So that is that, right click is very important. Set the top to right click and the bottom one to control the brush size and hardness. Though this technique of controlling the brush is efficient for the most part, if you are dodging and burning or painting, it can bring breaks. Let me show that to you. So here we are back in Photoshop and we have done a little bit of dodging and burning on this one. So simple dodging and burning with the curves adjustment lab. Here is the before, here is the after. Let me do that again for you. Let's turn this off. Create a curves adjustment lab. Turn this up just like this. Select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I. Then simply take the brush just the way we do. Decrease the flow to around 1% and just zoom in and start dodging this area. Let's make the brush a little smaller and make it softer all the way up. And then we are painting right here, making this area brighter. Well, this is nice, but let's say I wanna increase the size of my brush suddenly. So we are painting right here. I wanna increase the size of my brush. I would have to stop, just increase it this way, and then resume painting. Isn't that much better to use the keyboard shortcuts in this place? So when we are dodging and burning, it makes so much more sense to keep the hardness zero and control the brush size, especially when you're doing something that small. Control it with the bracket keys. So when you're painting, so you're continuing to paint, and as you are painting, you can just simply keep on pressing the bracket keys to make it bigger or smaller. You won't have to take breaks, like you're painting here, you just take a break, make it larger, and then paint again, make it smaller, then paint again. So it creates a disruption. So when you're painting something, you can use the bracket keys. But here's the thing. The lesser the effort that we have to put, the better. Your hand is on the left-hand side. If you are a right-handed person and you have the keyboard on your left-hand side, your hand is around the control alt shift the left-hand side of the keyboard. To use the bracket keys, you would have to lift your hand and move to the right hand side of the keyboard, which can be a little disturbing. So this is the time we change the shortcuts for our keyboard. Now keep in mind, if you are a left-handed person, you don't have to do this. This is only for right-handed people. So you can go to edit and then keyboard shortcuts. And here, just move down to brush size. Make sure tools is selected at the top and move down to brush size. It will be somewhere around here. Have a look, decrease brush size, increase brush size. So I wanna keep and assign a key somewhere on the left hand side of the keyboard. Now, I cannot assign Q because I use it for quick mask mode. I cannot also assign R because I use R all the time for rotation, but we can assign W and E, right? So for decreasing the brush size, we can keep it W. Now it's showing you a warning that W is already in use for quick selection. But anyway, I don't really use W for quick selection. I just go ahead and select that too, that's it. So it doesn't matter to me. If it matters to you, consider another shortcut. For increasing, I'm gonna keep it E. Now E is for the eraser tool. We're gonna directly select the eraser from here, doesn't really matter. And if you're using a Wacom Intuos Pro, 
at the back you have an eraser you can just turn it around and it's an eraser cool isn't it so we is fine hit okay now it's far more convenient now when you paint somewhere let's say i want to brighten this particular area right so you just have to press w and e see you're painting here want to make it larger press e want to make it smaller press w it's much more easier that way. Have a look. Here's the before. Here's the after. That's how we do dodging and burning. It does take a lot of time. Now, since we were talking about R and rotate, let me show you an additional trick as well. This is not related to tablets, but this might be helpful. So let's say you're painting in a particular direction. So we are painting right here. And it's not easy for you to paint in that direction. Maybe it's not easy for you to paint top and bottom like that, right? So you might want to rotate it and then paint. Without going to the rotate tool, you can easily do that. And here is how. You can hold the R, just hold it, don't release it. While you're in the brush tool, just hold the R, then you can rotate it. Now, once you have rotated it, release the R and you get back to the brush tool, which is super cool. This trick can be used to switch between any tool that you like. So let's say I'm brushing right here, right? And I want to move to the lasso tool. So I can hold L, it moves to the lasso tool. You can just make a selection. And then when you release the L, it gets you back to the brush. Isn't that amazing? Let me give you a personal tip. If you find a keyboard with extra assignable keys like the ones I have, please go for it. So this is the Corsair K95 and I own it. They have not sponsored me to say this. It has got these additional six keys that you can assign to anything. Even you can record long combinations of key presses. This is completely advanced, but you can, at the simplest level, assign it to a Photoshop shortcut. That can be very, very helpful. That way, you don't have to change the existing shortcuts. And by the way, these are gaming keyboards. If that turns you off, let me ask you this. Isn't Photoshop a game? Well, if you ask me, definitely yes. A productive one. Time for us to set the express keys. Now, depending upon the model you have, the number of keys that you get on your Wacom might differ. If you have no keys on your Wacom, don't worry about it. You can always customize your keyboard shortcuts according to your comfort. So how do we assign these keys according to your comfort? There are four simple steps. Step number one, determine the shortcuts that you use the most, which is not fairly easy to do with the keyboard. On a level of how often you use them, prioritize it. Now, depending upon the number of keys that you have on your Wacom tablet, pick the top four, six, or eight. Then you assign these shortcuts that you picked to the keys according to your comfort. For retouching, let me show you my setup. The one that I'm using is the Wacom Intuos Pro medium size paper edition, and it has eight express keys. Let me show you how I set them up. To set up the keys, first of all, make sure that your device is selected, and then we're gonna click here in functions. Now select your software. Now I'm using Photoshop CC 2018. So the step backward and step forward shortcuts are a little different from Photoshop CC 2019. And we're gonna guide you there. Have a look, eight keys show up here. Now the first one that I use, I use it for step forward, okay? And we can click on in here and go to keyboard and keystroke. The shortcut for step forward is Control Shift Z. Command Shift Z. Okay, and hit OK. You can also name it by the way. So if you are here in keyboard and keystroke, you can also name it step forward for extra organization, but I'm gonna skip that. Now, the next one here, the second one is the one that I use for step backward. So let's go to keyboard, keystroke, and for step backward in CC 2018, the shortcut is Control Alt Z. Command Option Z on a Mac. Okay, and just hit OK. If you're using Photoshop CC 2019, then it's just Control Z or Command Z. Hit OK. Now, the third one is the one that I don't use more often. And we're gonna talk about that later. You can also disable it. So I'm just gonna click here and click on Disabled. Now the fourth one is very, very important to me. Even if you have just four keys, just have this as one of them. And that is Control zero, command zero. It fits the canvas to the screen. So let me show that to you. So here, just click on this one and then go to keyboard, 
keystroke and then press Ctrl 0 on Windows, Command 0 on Mac. Hit OK. Now let's understand these four and then we'll move to the other four. So here we are in Photoshop. So let's take the brush and start painting. We painted one time, All right? Let's increase the flow. We painted twice, thrice, and four times. Now you can press the second key from the top to go back, the top key to go forward, step backward and step forward. The third one is disabled and the fourth one is very important. Let's say I'm zoomed in and I'm retouching here very minutely, right? So with W and E, remember the keyboard shortcuts, we are decreasing and increasing the brush size. And then we want to just zoom out to fit the canvas to the screen. You just have to press the key that we assigned and boom. Even if you zoom out and check your composition and all that stuff, press that key, boom, it's all set up. So that is a very important key to me. Just working on it. You don't have to zoom out and then just fit it. You don't have to do any of that. Just press that key, it's all set up. Let me show you a real retouching example. So here, let's say you want to remove this line, right? So I'm just using my regular healing brush tool. So let's select the regular healing brush tool and then decrease the brush size with W and E, don't forget that. And then we take a sample here and then just we paint here. That's all good, nice and fine. And once we are done, we can simply press that key and it just fits. And now we can see whether it looks good when zoomed out or not. Speaking of retouching, let's assign the rest of the keys. The top one at the bottom, I'm gonna assign to moving up a layer and we can do this by clicking here, keyboard, keystroke, and here, Alt and the right bracket key. On a Mac, that would be Option and the right bracket key. And hit OK, okay? And the bottom one, moving down the layer, it can be keystroke, Alt and the left bracket key. Option and the left bracket key on a Mac. All right, now what that does, especially when you're dodging and burning, you wanna move between dodging and burning layer. This can be very helpful. So here we are in Photoshop and here we have the dodging and burning layer before and after. Let me show you the after. Zoom in and let me open those layers. So this one was darken, this one was burning layer, this one was dodging layer. So have a look at this. We just brightened some areas using this layer. Now let's say I am here with the brush, why does the foreground color flow at let's say 1% and we are just painting here. We're just brightening this particular area, all right? Which is super cool. Now I wanna darken it, I wanna move down. How can I do that? Simply press the button. You move down the layer automatically right here. Now you just darken some areas. Let's say I wanna darken this area. Then you wanna brighten some areas again. You click the button at the top in the bottom. You just move that layer, you see, and then you just brighten it. Now, these are the buttons that I have assigned according to the comfort of my hand. My hand is in the middle, we are painting. All we have to do is to move the hand, slide the hand to the key, and then with the third finger, just press it, just like that. You don't have to put much effort. The lesser the effort, the better, always remember that. The third one I'm gonna assign to new layer so that I don't have to go to the corner and click on that button. So let's go there, keyboard, keystroke, and the shortcut for a new layer without a dialog box is Control, Alt, Shift, and N, right? And hit OK. Now, when you go back to Photoshop and you wanna create a new layer, it's very easy, just press that button, it creates a new layer, just keep pressing, it keeps on creating new layers. And the last key, we're gonna assign it to a very special shortcut. We use it all the time, and that is creating a stamp visible layer. And click on in here, keyboard, keystroke, and then press Control, Alt, Shift, E on Windows, Command, Option, Shift, E on a Mac. And hit OK. Now, let's say we want to liquefy. So here we are with our next example, it's the same example, and we have done most of retouching. So here is the before, here is the after. Now it's time for us to apply a little bit of liquify to it. And to be able to do that, we have to create a stamp visible layer. And just press the last key right there. It creates a stamp visible layer automatically. You don't have to press that complex shortcut. Now, we have to convert this layer to a smart object to be able to change the liquify later. How about assigning the key that we had just turned off or disabled 
as converting it to a smart object. Wouldn't that be awesome? But there is no shortcut to convert it to smart object. If you right click on this one and have a look at convert to smart object, there is no shortcut right here. So first of all, we have to create a shortcut for converting to smart object. And to be able to do that, very simple again, you have to go to edit and keyboard shortcuts. Here, this is in the layers panel. So for the shortcuts for, select panel menus. And we have to come down to layers. So there we go, here are the layers. As you can see, now just come down to convert to smart object and let's assign a keyboard shortcut to it. Um, let's assign it Control, Shift, Alt and S. Now it's already used for save for web that I don't use it personally. If you use it, you can assign some other shortcut. Click on accept and then hit OK. Now when you press Alt, Control, Shift and S, it will be converted to a smart object. We don't want to do this. Let's go back, edit, step backward, or simply press the step backward key right there. Okay, and now let's go to the Wacom properties, the key that we had disabled. Let's keyboard, keystroke, Alt, Control, Shift, and S. Hit OK. Now all you have to do is just press that key, the third one, and it will be converted to a smart object very easily. Now you can simply go to filter, liquify and apply as much liquify as you want. Now inside of liquify, just keep in mind that your W and E key that you had assigned won't work. And that's why that shortcut is very essential because that works all the time everywhere, whether you're masking or anything, it's very useful. Left side makes it smaller, right side makes it bigger, top here decreases the pressure. If you take it to the bottom, it increases the pressure. So I'm just going to fix the nose a little bit and that's fine and hit OK and it's solved before after. Now let's talk about mapping. What is mapping? Let me show that to you. To open up the mapping settings, first of all select the device, make sure that is selected. Select your pen and then click on mapping right there. Now mapping simply is how much of the tablet represents the screen. That's it. Have a look at this diagram. This will make it clear for you. So this much of the tablet is representing the entire screen. So if I move my pen to this corner, so on the screen as well, it will be on this corner. So if I move to this corner, have a look on the screen as well, it's on that corner. It's not like a mouse that you can move in just one place a couple of times. So this is a mouse, right? Have a look in the screen and have a look at my hand as well. So it's at the same position. I'm just moving it a couple of times and it moves to the right hand side. It's again at the same position. I'm just going to move it a couple of times. One, two, three, and it's moving to the left hand side. But with pens and tablets, it is different. It's just like a piece of paper and drawing. You cannot just paint on the same place and move to the edge of the paper. You cannot do that. You have to just go to the edge of the paper, right? Similarly, this is just a representation. You can make it smaller if you want to. So you can choose tablet area portion, click on that one and you can make this smaller, just like this. And if you hit OK, only that area of the tablet will represent the entire screen. So even if I move just here in the tablet, it will move to the corner of the screen, but only in Photoshop. So Photoshop is selected. If I open up Photoshop and if I move just to half this area, not even full, just to this area, it will reach the end of the screen. Are you getting it? So you don't have to move your hands much. Now, let me show you something else as well. This is important. So let's get back to this one and let's set tablet portion to full. Now, the other thing that I keep in mind all the time is I always check force proportions. Now, what does that mean? If I check that off, the entire tablet, no matter what the aspect ratio is, will represent the entire screen, not in that proportion. So what happens is, let me demonstrate this to you with the help of a simple lid. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep this lid on the tablet and draw a circle with it. Let me do that for you. So here we are in Photoshop and here we have a blank document. So I'm going to take my brush right here. I'm going to keep it right there. Keep this lid right there and trace a circle 
you will see that it won't be a perfect circle. I'm going to increase the flow to 100. Have a look at this. This is not a circle at all. It is more of an oval. Have a look. Just excuse my drawing right there, but it's something like this, right? It's not exactly a circle at all. However, if you go back to the Wacom tablet properties, have a look. This aspect ratio, which is even taller than the screen, represents the screen which is narrower. And that's why the discrepancy happens. And that's why I always keep the force proportion checked. It gives you much more true representation. Now, once this is checked, now if I go back to Photoshop and on a new layer with a different color, if I draw a circle, you'll see that it's not oval. It will be a perfect circle. Let's start from here. I'm going to keep my stuff right there. And let's draw a circle again. Now you have a look. Right? It makes so much more sense that way. Have a look. The red one is much more perfect than the previous one. This one was oval. Now when you draw it with the force proportions checked, it's much more accurate. Now this is helpful, especially when let's say you're creating your signature, right? Or you're signing your work and you're making your signature, it will be a very accurate representation of your signature because it won't be squished, right? It won't be compressed. That's why always keep force proportions checked. Now the tablet portion depends upon your taste. If you don't want to move your hand so much, you can keep it small. So here we are in the properties. So if you're just feeling like not moving my hand so much, you're just going to click here, click on portion and you can keep it as small as that one and then hit OK. And then when you get back to Photoshop, you don't even have to move your hand so much. You can keep it at one place and just move a little bit and draw big stuff. Just keep it right there. Whoops. It's so big that I'm so small here that it's getting out of control. I'm just going to fit it right there. Now, when you do this, when you make things small like this, I'm going to keep it full. You trade off with precision. The larger the tablet surface that you have, the more precision you will have, but the lesser comfort you will have because you'll have to move your hands so much. The smaller the area that you have, the more comfort you have, but lesser the precision that you have. So you'll move a little bit. It will move a lot on a big screen. So this also shows you that the monitor size does matter. So right now I'm working on a 27 inch monitor. If you're using on your laptop, you might want to reduce the size. If you're using on a huge monitor, you might want to use the tablet fully because when you're using a huge monitor and you're retouching an image, you don't have to zoom in so much. You'll be just zoomed out all the time and will be retouching. So you won't be moving your hand so much. So all in all, whenever you're resizing your tablet area, keep two things in mind. Comfort versus precision. If you want more comfort with a smaller area, you will have lesser precision. If you want more precision with a larger area, you will have lesser comfort. The second thing to consider is the screen size. If you're working on a huge monitor, you can use a larger area. If you're using a small laptop, use a smaller area on your tablet. If you ask me personally, I will use the full tablet. You know, that way you just exercise a little more and lose some calories. Anyway, you're sitting down all day, retouching, not running. So at least you have some exercise to do. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs>
to rotate. I'm going to pick up my hand, then press my finger on the cycle, then rotate it, and then paint. So I don't use it for rotation. Let me show you a way that makes more sense. So let's say we are painting and we hold the R key. It opens up the rotate function and I rotate it and I release the R key. It takes you back to the brush as we showed before. So that way you don't have to pick up your hand and take it around the touch ring. So for rotate, I simply use shortcuts even for zooming in and out. Just press command and spacebar, drag it to the right to zoom in, drag it to the left to zoom out. So you're in the same position you're painting from the very same position. Press the shortcut, zoom in, zoom out. Don't have to carry your hand here and there. For any functions other than this, the touch ring can be very useful. And you can assign it to your taste. Now here comes the most important tip. Ready for this? This is going to save your sanity. Truly, when I say this, I mean it. If you have not learned anything from this video, don't worry about it, but just take this. We have to take just one thing away from this tutorial. Let me show that to you without any further ado. So we have worked so hard to customize our tablet, set it up, set up the shortcuts and all of that stuff. Now let's say your computer just corrupts or let's say something happens. Your tablet just resets. Maybe you disconnected it and connected it again and something happened in your computer that completely reset the tablet or maybe an update came up. What to do then? You will have to reset that again. To prevent that, do this. All you need to do is to open up Wacom Tablet Preference File Utility. So from the search, Wacom Tablet Preference File Utility, just select that one. Now, all you have to do, My Preferences area, just click on Backup. Now you can take your backup on your desktop any way you want. I'm going to take a backup on C Drive. Let's name it. W backup and let's say 2019 January, right? And save. Now the backup is saved. Now you can save this file on your external hard disk or somewhere safe. And then let's say your tablet resets or something bad happens. You can just simply not worry first of all and click on restore. Find that file. It was in C. I guess C Unmesh fast. It will be right there. Wacom W Backup 2019 Jan. Click on that one and click on Open. It will be set to that preference. As easy as that. On a Mac, you can simply find it here. You can just go to your launch pad and then just type in Wacom here. You'll find it. There you go. Wacom Tablet Utility. Just click on that. It's the same thing. Remove Backup Restore. Click on Backup and it will be backed up. Just like we did with the Windows. In the end, always keep in mind the lesser the effort, the better. And the customizations that we did today are my personal favorite settings. If you find a way that works better for you, by all means, go for it and teach me as well. Here's the thing. You have your own image style. You know your style. You know how you edit. You know your workflow. So your settings might be different from me. Use this tutorial not as a definite set of rules, but as a starting point to guide you in customizing it your way so that it works for you the best. I hope this tutorial helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tip, trick or tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.